Now, the red velvet cake has to be the true, authentic American cake, and it's found in bakeries all across the states. So I'm going to take influences from it and use a chocolate cake as a base, but then do the red colouring as the topping. Now, the start of this is a chocolate cake. First of all, we're going to mix butter and sugar together. To that, add a teaspoon of vanilla extract and then three eggs, one at a time. The thing that makes this cake special is the rising agent. We've got self-raising flour and cola, and it's the cola reacting with the bicarb soda that will allow this cake to rise up, and rise up quite a lot. So we fold in, first of all, the cocoa powder. The flour can go in. This is self-raising flour. And then the cola. You want about 60 mils. And there's a reaction, and I can actually, you can feel it actually working in, in your hands as you're mixing it. It starts to rise even before it's put in the oven. Pour the batter into an eight inch cake tin. A quick tap will get this thick batter right into the edges, and then it's into a medium oven for an hour. And now for the frosting. This is the red velvet part of my cake. I'm going to make a Swiss meringue. Gently mix egg whites and caster sugar over boiling water. Now, all meringue recipes are almost the same. It's the same quantity as sugar to egg whites, but it's how we incorporate that sugar that gives the meringue a difference in texture. And it's very simple to test whether this is going to be ready before we mix it. So just lift out a bit and then just rub it in between your fingers. And if you can feel any grains, you need to keep heating it up. Once the sugar is dissolved, it's time to whisk it. And what will happen is, as the sugar starts to cool down, the whites will whip up and it'll almost double in size. And it's that that's the basis of all the good buttercreams in America. When the meringue has cooled, add the butter. And this is really personal preference, how much you want to add, and personal taste. And now you can add the food colouring. Now, I always find it best, whenever you're buying food colouring, to buy the paste because you use a lot less. And I actually think it's much better for you than the essence. And you'll see, even though I've only got a small amount, you'll see how quickly the color develops in this. Once the color spreads, your frosting is ready. So you can pop it in the fridge and allow it to set. cake's risen and the coal has done its thing. It's actually caused it to rise quite a lot. And now for the best bit, which is the icing. Slice the top of the cake to give yourself an even base for the frosting. Then using a palette knife, spread the meringue mixture over the top first and then round the edge. It's actually funny, this cake, because you can use any real soft, fizzy drink for this. And you can actually taste whichever drink you use in the cake. The final touch, a layer of marshmallows. Well, this is what cake making is all about, a bit like the red velvet cake. You eat with your eyes, really. And for kids to get involved in baking, this, I suppose, is, is kind of like the perfect cake for them. You serve this at a kid's party, I think it'll go down a treat. And there you have it. You're not going to miss it. My version of a red velvet cake with marshmallow. Now, the use of a soft drink to make a cake rise is something that cooks have been doing for quite a long time. But most importantly with this, that it actually holds the cake together really nicely and keeps it lovely and moist. It tastes good too.